my name is Janice and I'm the nurse here at Pacific Center for Plastic Surgery. Today I will be discussing your general post-operative instructions. The first thing I'd like to talk to you about is your activity level. Rest is very important. However, we do ask you to move around for a couple of minutes every hour after your surgery. Slowly increase your activity level until you're at your normal level. We advise you to have no heavy lifting, bending, exercise, sun exposure, or swimming and bathing in a hot tub for six weeks after your procedure. Please refrain from sexual activity or alcohol for the first two weeks after your procedure. If you've been advised to wear the TED hose, which are the support stockings that you wore to your procedure, please leave those on until you're at your normal activity level. Next, I'll talk to you about your positioning. It is important to sleep in an elevated position, either using a reclining chair or two to three pillows to support your head, neck, and your back. We ask you to sleep in an elevated position for the first couple of weeks after your procedure to aid in the decrease of the swelling. Next, I'd like to talk to you about ice packs. It is not mandatory to use ice packs, however many patients find that it's comforting in their post-operative face. If you choose to use ice packs, do not place them directly on any of your incisions. Place them only on the surrounding areas that are exposed. If you are to use the ice packs, please place a barrier between the actual ice pack and your skin so as to not cause an ice burn. We actually recommend using some frozen peas instead of actual ice as it's more comforting. You can place the ice packs on those areas for 20 minutes at a time, removing them after 20 minutes. We recommend you only using ice for the first 48 to 72 hours following your procedure. We will now talk about your wound care. It is important not to remove any tapes on the incisions until your first post-operative visit. Your physician will remove those tapes and look at your incisions at that time. If they happen to fall off prior to then, then you can gently clean them with a mixture of your hydrogen peroxide and water, half and half equal parts, and place a thin layer of bacitracin on them. Once the tapes have been removed, we'd like you to continue to clean them, as I had just stated, for the first seven to 10 days after your procedure, or until your incisions are completely healed. We ask that you do not shower until the third day after your procedure, or if you do have drains in place, you are not to shower until those drains have been removed by your physician. On the third day, you remove any of the garments and any of your wrappings, and you may shower as normal. Be advised not to use excessively hot water. After you've showered, either let your incisions air dry, or you can use a hair dryer on a cool setting to dry them off completely before replacing your garment. We'd like you to wear your garment as instructed by your physician for up to six weeks after your surgical procedure. The only time we'd like you to remove your garment are if you need to shower or if you need to launder it. It is a very important part of your post-operative recovery phase to keep this garment in, on in place as stated by your physician. Please refrain from driving while on your pain medication or if you have a muscle relaxant that has been prescribed to you, as both of these medications can alter your judgment. Next, I'd like to discuss the most common medications that will be prescribed. The first one I'd like to discuss is your antibiotic. If you're having a surgery under local anesthesia, which would be done here in our office, you will begin taking your antibiotic the morning of surgery. You will then take your next dose that evening and your final dose the following day. If you, ha if you happen to be having your surgery under general anesthesia or IV sedation, you will not be taking your medication until after your surgery. You will begin your antibiotic after surgery with food. You will then follow it the next day, taking your second dose at breakfast and your final dose at dinner. Pain medication is recommended for the first 48 hours after your procedure. We recommend you taking it as prescribed by your physician, and it's also easier on your stomach if you actually take it with food. Sun pain medications can increase your level of nausea, so taking it with food can decrease this significantly. After the first 48 hours, you can take your pain medication as you choose for your pain control, 
or you can switch to a Tylenol based product. Please refrain from ibuprofen or aspirin products in the first two to three weeks following your procedure. If you've been prescribed a clonidine or a scopolamine patch, both of these need to be placed on prior to your procedure. Please see our videos on specific instructions on how to place either the clonidine or scopolamine patch. Another common medication that is prescribed is Zofran. This can decrease any nausea after your procedure. Many people feel nausea if they take some pain medication or after a general anesthetic. If the scopolamine, which is for nausea, does not hold back your nausea enough, you may introduce the Zofran, which you take every 12 hours as needed. If you happen to get constipated from either the general anesthetic or possibly your pain medication, we do recommend you picking up an over-the-counter medication called Colace. This is a natural stool softener which will aid in the discomfort that constipation can bring. During your post-operative recovery phase, it is normal to experience some dizziness and lightheadedness. Be sure to drink ample amount of water or Gatorade to be sure that you are hydrated to decrease this process. Itching is also normal in your recovery phase, as well as swelling and bruising. Swelling and bruising can be excessive for up to six weeks postoperatively, and then it will slowly decrease until it is gone. We do advise you to take your vitamins that we have recommended for you, which include Arnica and Bromelin. These both help decrease the swelling and bruising in your postoperative phase and increase your recovery period. We do want you to watch for signs and symptoms of infection. The most common things to look for are excessive redness, swelling, or a fever greater than 100 degrees. If you've noticed any of these or any bleeding from your incision sites, please contact the office immediately.